Ever wondered how the world of Adventure Time might look under the harsh influence of radiation? What happens to humanity when exposed to such extreme conditions? That's right, folks. We're talking about oozers. Imagine a world drastically changed by nuclear fallout, where humanity transforms into terrifying radioactive creatures that seem like they're straight out of a zombie flick. This is the fascinating and terrifying reality of Adventure Time's oozers. Let's start with the most obvious question. What are oozers and how did they start? Originating from the most horrific aftermath of the Mushroom War, Losers are not just a random occurrence. These grotesque creatures are likely the earliest mutations triggered by the war's radiation. Picture this. Humans, once living their everyday lives, get exposed to colossal amounts of radiation. Their bodies cannot handle this sudden, intense exposure, leading to profound physical and mental changes. The result? The eerie, zombie-like creatures we've come to know as oozers. Their appearance in previously populated areas only strengthens the theory of their human origin. The oozers' physical characteristics distorted as as they may be, still echo human forms. The disturbingly familiar shape of their bodies, their movements, and the fact that they carry the very radiation within them that likely sparked their mutation all point towards a chilling conclusion. Oozers were once us. They were once human beings. But these are not just mere humans twisted beyond recognition. The transformation is not only physical, it's profoundly behavioral as well. Their humanity, it seems, has been replaced by a relentless drive that propels their every move. This perfectly leads us into our next question. Why do oozers behave the way they do? These aren't your average mutated beings. The oozers, in their relentless pursuit and alarming aggression, might remind you of something. Dare we say, zombies? Well, you wouldn't be wrong. Oozers exhibit characteristics remarkably similar to the classic undead creatures we know from our beloved horror movies. They're drawn to noise, and not in the way you or I might be drawn to our favorite song. Noise, for oozers, is like a siren's call, leading them to their prey. Yes, you've heard that right, Ray. Once they find it, they'll stop at nothing to bite it, in an unsettling desperate attempt to turn it into one of their own. But why do they behave this way? I think the most plausible explanation lies in their very mutation. Imagine this, you're a creature born out of intense radiation. The world around you is hostile, survival is uncertain. What would you do? Your instinct to survive would kick in, wouldn't it? That's precisely what's happening with the oozers. Their behavior, as horrifying as it may be, is simply their survival mechanism gone wrong due to the intense radioactivity. Their unrelenting survival instinct presents a grim reality that the inhabitants of the land of Ooh constantly grapple with oozification. This term might not mean much to an outside, but to those living in the post-apocalyptic world of Adventure Time, it signifies a chilling and twisted form of survival. But I can hear you asking, what is oozification and why does it happen? Oozification is a terrifying metamorphosis, a process where the oozers assimilate other living beings, turning them into their own kind. It's the grim reality of survival in the land of Ooh, a constant threat lurking around every corner. But why does oozification happen? Let's revisit what we've learned about the oozers so far. These creatures are the embodiment of a survival instinct gone horribly wrong. The relentless pursuit, the aggression, the biting, it's all a part of a macabre survival strategy. Oozification is the endgame of that strategy. Oozification is a method of propagation, a twisted tail on the circle of life. When an oozer bites a living creature, it transfers some of the radioactive material that brought about its own horrifying mutation. This radioactive material then triggers a similar transformation in the victim, effectively turning them into another oozer. Think of oozification as a dark twist on the classic idea of zombification from folklore, only with the added horror of radioactivity. It's their survival mechanism, their way of increasing their numbers and ensuring their own twisted version of life goes on. But here's a thought that might have crossed your mind. Can oozers evolve or show any intelligence? A fair question given the complexity of life in adventure time. While oozers on the whole seem to operate on pure instinct, we've seen an exception in James, standing out from the ooze-covered crowd. James, a character we've come to know and maybe even care about, undergoes the dreadful process of oozification. Yet, remarkably, he maintains some of his memories and communication abilities after the transformation. A princess. <gasps> Original James? His behavior seems to contradict everything we know about oozers, doesn't it? Could this be a hit that oozers are not entirely devoid of cognitive functions? Could they evolve beyond their zombie-like existence? Or is James simply a unique case, a one-in-a-million anomaly? James' situation offers an intriguing perspective. It suggests that the transformation into an oozer might not always be as total or as drastic as we believe. Could it be that some parts of the original personality, the human identity, well, I guess in this case, Candy Citizen, can somehow survive the process? We can't definitely 
definitely say if all Uzus have the potential to reach James's level of cognitive function. However, James's existence poses an interesting question. If the transformation isn't total, if there are remnants of the original personality left, then what does that mean for the Uzus? What does that mean for the land of U? What does that mean for the survivors? This thought about partial transformation and retention of cognitive functions may lead us to a rather hopeful and exciting speculation. Could there be a cure for Uzification? A world where Uzification is no longer a death sentence. A world where being bitten by an Uzer doesn't mean a terrifying transformation. Is such a world possible? Could there be a cure for Uzification? In this series, we're kind of left in the dark about this. No direct solution is provided, no miracle cure reveal. But don't lose hope just yet, because we have one beacon of scientific prowess who might just have the answers. Princess Bubblegum. With her genius intellect and unparalleled scientific knowledge, it's conceivable to think that she could potentially find a cure. Theoretical as it may be, it's an intriguing notion. If one could neutralize the effects of the radiation, or perhaps reverse the mutation process, maybe the threat of usification could be eliminated once and for all. But here's a fascinating twist. The James 2 episode. Remember the scene where James clones merge to form a giant blob? Interestingly, the usification process seems to halt there. Is it possible that merging a collective approach or fusion of multiple entities might inhibit usification? It's a tantalizing possibility. Though the cure for usification remains speculative, it's a glimmer of hope in the grim reality of the Uzers. But the larger question is, even if a cure was possible, what would it mean for the land of U and its inhabitants? Would the cure bring salvation or yet another upheap in the post-apocalyptic world? As we ponder the potential for a cure, we must also address another pressing question about these creatures that has undoubtedly crossed your mind. Are Uzers immortal? Immortality. It's a concept as old as time. Something many have dreamt of, yet few, if any, have attained. But what about the Uzus? Are these grotesque creatures born out of the harsh reality of the Mushroom War gifted with everlasting life? The answer isn't very straightforward. In the grim world of the Uzus, death seems to be a concept almost as twisted as their very existence. Despite the hardships, despite their brutal environment, Uzus persist. They thrive. They survive. This never-ending existence suggests a certain robust vitality. But is it true immortality or simply an extended lifespan? It's a fine line, one we are yet to fully comprehend. One clue might be in their origins. Oozers, remember, were once humans, or at least some of them. Their transformation into the terrifying creatures we know was brought about by extreme radiation exposure as a survival mechanism during the Mushroom War. They evolved to survive. But does survival equal eternal life? The truth about the Uzu's lifespan remains shrouded in mystery. I'm curious to know what you think. The question of their immortality is as puzzling and intriguing as the creatures themselves. Until we know more, we can only speculate and wonder. Are Uzu's the undead? Or are they just incredibly tough survivors in a world that's relentlessly harsh? While we grapple with the enigma of the Uzu's possible immortality, yet another pressing question arises. What do Uzu's truly embody in Adventure Time's intricate universe? How do these grotesque beings intertwine with the expansive narrative of this captivating post apocalyptic World. Delving deeper, losers become less of mindless monsters and more of potent symbols of echoing the lingering devastation of the Mushroom War. They are living relics of a world-altering catastrophe, the tangible manifestations of the war's harrowing aftermath. Their very existence, chilling and ghastly, paints a vivid picture of war's disfiguring consequences. Yet, through the horror, losers embody a strange continuity and survive life in the land of U continues in strange and unsettling ways, detached from its former human identity. This is a testament to life's tenaciousness in the face of overwhelming odds, even in the face of catastrophic destruction. The symbolism of Uzers is just one facet of their existence. In an equally compelling light, Uzers introduce crucial moral and survival quandaries for Adventure Time's other characters. Their presence constantly challenges the inhabitants of Boo, forcing them to walk a fine line between survival and retaining their humanity. This just enriches the narrative and thematic layers of the series. Uzers, horrifying as they may be, are an intrinsic element of Adventure Time's universe. They stand as grim reminders of a bygone era, a relentless menace in the present, and a looming enigma for the future. Just imagine what other secrets these monstrous beings might still hold.